Quick, you've got 10 seconds to solve this puzzle. What's the missing number in this sequence? Ready? Go! Time's up. Did you figure it out? Let me know in the comments. Now, do you think you're smart? Well, here's the thing. Intelligence isn't just one thing. It's a whole spectrum. Today, we're diving into every major way we measure intelligence. And you might be surprised at what you learn. IQ tests, the classic standard. We have to start here, the intelligence quotient, or IQ test. Developed over a century ago, it's the most famous and widely used method for measuring intelligence. But here's what most people get wrong. IQ doesn't measure how much you know. It measures how well you solve problems, recognize patterns, and process information quickly. Scored on a bell curve, 100 is average. Above 130, genius territory. Below 70, considered intellectually challenged. But the real question is, does a number really define intelligence? Critics argue that IQ tests are biased, favoring certain cultures and education systems. And let's be honest, having a high IQ doesn't guarantee success. Just ask the countless brilliant minds who ace tests but struggled in the real world. IQ might be a starting point, but it's far from the full picture. Emotional intelligence, EQ, the power of people skills. What if intelligence isn't just about solving puzzles, but about understanding people? Enter emotional intelligence, or EQ. This measures your ability to recognize, understand, and manage emotions, both in yourself and in others. Ever met someone who just gets people? They read body language, sense emotions, and know exactly how to react in any situation. That's high EQ in action. Here's the kicker. Studies show EQ is often a better predictor of success than IQ. It's crucial for leadership, relationships, and everyday social interactions. And the best part? Unlike IQ, you can actually improve your EQ. It's like a muscle. You can train it to become stronger. The Stanford Binet Test, the original IQ scale. This is where it all began. The Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale, developed in the early 1900s, was one of the first real attempts to measure intelligence systematically. It introduced the idea of mental age, where if an 8-year-old performed at the level of an average 10-year-old, they'd be considered ahead of their peers. But here's the catch. While it's still used today, it has the same flaws as IQ tests. It's great for measuring academic intelligence, but ignores creativity, emotional intelligence, and real-world problem-solving. The Wexler Scales, testing beyond IQ. Ever heard of the WAIS, Wexler Adult Intelligence Scale, or WISC, Wexler Intelligence Scale for Children? These tests go beyond traditional IQ by breaking intelligence into different categories, like verbal comprehension, working memory, and processing speed. Why does that matter? Because two people can have the same overall IQ, but one might be amazing at verbal reasoning while the other excels at spatial puzzles. It's a more detailed way to measure intelligence, but still, it doesn't cover everything. Raven's Progressive Matrices, Pure Problem Solving. What if you could measure intelligence without words? That's what Raven's Progressive Matrices do. No reading, no cultural bias, just pattern recognition. This test is used by the military, businesses, and researchers worldwide because it focuses purely on problem-solving ability. It's great for measuring fluid intelligence, your ability to think on the spot. But here's the downside. It doesn't measure creativity, social intelligence, or emotional intelligence. So again, is this really the full picture? Alright, let's put your problem-solving skills to the test again. Here's a Raven's Matrix puzzle. You've got 10 seconds to figure out which shape comes next. Ready? Let's go. Time's up. Did you get it right? Let me know in the comments. And don't worry if you didn't. 10 seconds isn't a long time. Now that we've tested your problem-solving skills, let's talk about a theory that goes beyond traditional IQ tests. Multiple intelligences. Howard Gardner's Game Changer. What if I told you there isn't just one type of intelligence, but nine? Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences shattered the traditional IQ model. He argued that intelligence isn't just about logic and reasoning. It can be musical, bodily, interpersonal, 
or even nature-based? Ever met someone who can pick up a new instrument instantly? Or a dancer whose body moves like it was built for rhythm? Or a scientist who sees patterns in nature no one else does? That's multiple intelligences at work. And here's the catch. Traditional IQ tests don't measure most of them. Meaning, some of the most brilliant minds in the world might not score high on an IQ test, but that doesn't mean they aren't intelligent. I actually made a separate video breaking down all nine types of intelligence in detail. So if you're curious about which type you might have, go check it out. It'll pop up in the top right corner, or you can find it linked in the description below. Creativity tests, measuring imagination. What about intelligence that can't be calculated? Creativity tests, like the Torrance Tests of Creative Thinking, TTCT, measure how well people think outside the box. You've probably heard of divergent thinking, coming up with multiple solutions to a single problem. That's what creativity tests measure. Think of Leonardo da Vinci, Einstein, or Steve Jobs, all legendary thinkers who didn't just solve problems, but created entirely new ways of thinking. Standard IQ tests don't measure this, but some argue it's one of the most important types of intelligence for success. Speaking of creativity, let's play a quick game. I'll describe a famous genius, and you guess who it is. Ready? This person was a painter, inventor, and scientist who designed flying machines centuries before airplanes existed. Who is it? Let me know in the comments, and if you have another genius in mind, share that too. AI and machine learning intelligence tests, the future of measurement. Here's where it gets wild. Scientists are now using artificial intelligence to measure intelligence. Instead of relying on written tests, AI can analyze problem-solving patterns, decision-making speed, and even how your brain processes information in real time. Brain scans, neural activity tracking, and even genetic markers are being explored to determine what truly makes someone intelligent. It's a new frontier and some believe AI could one day create a perfect intelligence measurement, one that adapts and evolves with us. So, we've explored IQ, EQ, creativity, and even how AI is changing the way we measure intelligence. So, what do you think? Which of these intelligence tests matters most to you? And remember, intelligence isn't just a number. It's the way you see and shape the world around you. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more deep dives into the mind. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.